I said you're a fucking loser. Okay. 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 All the times that I beat it out of you, as you say, you haven't even seen a beating from me. You just want me to cry more? I want you to cry more? No, no, I want you to kill yourself. I want you to go in the bathroom and slit your wrist right now and bleed out. Okay? Mm-hmm. January of 2019. It was a holiday weekend. He came back Sunday night just in a rage. I remember him pushing my head back into the pool and then pulling me out by my hair. She started to choke my mom underwater. So I got mom's phone and dialed 911. I just remember him at the top of the stairs <laughs> with a Nerf gun. He had a Nerf gun. Yeah. I was going to shoot at him. I was trying to defend me and my mom and my sister. You call for help and they take your kids from you. You're raised to think they're going to help you, and they don't. The Department of Children and Families it sounds like what you're saying that for as bad as the abuse was. Nothing compared to what DCF I do. Nothing. Carmine's punishment was that he spent 21 minutes in jail mm -hmm. and you lost your kids. How do you go from being a mom to not being a mom anymore? In this episode of Fault Lines, we travel to Florida to investigate an agency with a record of blaming domestic violence victims for their abuse and then taking away their children. For months, I've been speaking to women across the state of Florida who tell me that despite its intention to protect children, the Florida Department of Children and Families is causing more harm than good. Last year, the agency separated more than 3,000 children because of domestic violence. In April, I met a group of women who gathered at the state capitol to protest DCF. The sign over here to prevent child abuse is a joke because they're the ones that are causing abuse. You just come into your house, without a warrant, without a court order, and take your child. It is a level of grief I don't know how to put into words. Webster didn't design a word for this. I don't know who we're supposed to be protecting here, but nobody's protecting us. The, the abuser needs to be held accountable, not the mother and not the children. It's been two and a half years since DCF first separated Lena Hale from her two children. She lives alone now. Mom? Hey. Hey. All right, I'm on my way. I'm running late. After Lena's then husband, Carmine Lanya, attacked her in 2019, DCF placed her son Lane at her mother's house. There On weekday mornings, Lena comes over to make him breakfast before school. He's 10 now. Hey, boo boo chicken. I miss you, angel. <laughs> Ain't too cool for her mommy now. Dad, do you know where the chocolate chips are? She moves them every time. Cool. Oh, I found them. The department separated Lane from his stepfather, Carmine, because witnessing domestic violence right. can have severe long-term effects on kids. OK, here, Bill. But DCF also separated him from Lena. In the agency's view, when Carmine beat Lena and strangled her, she didn't do enough to prevent her children from you witnessing it. For you before you go. William Lane, let's go, buddy. Give everybody a kiss. Now, DCF doesn't consider her a safe parent. Don't forget to close She's not permitted to live with either one of her children. 
So is this the sort of normal routine? Mm-hmm. This is what we do. Right, William? Do you miss having her here? I met Carmine in 2013. I was living with my parents at the time. I was a single mom, I was going to school. The things that attracted me to Carmine were the things I ended up hating about him the most. He was just macho man and large and in charge. And, you know, I was, he was so handsome. When did Carmine become physically abusive? I was within months. What was a push became like a choke or a grab. I got pregnant. I was always on eggshells, always. Because I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop because any little thing could set him up. I nursed her for 32 months. And I think that was a comfort to her because there was so much screaming. I didn't want my kids to see, so they had sound machines and hurricane fans. You say something wise to me again, I'll f***ing smack you in the f***ing courtroom. I have those recorded calls because he was calling from the office where we had all of our calls recorded. Was this normal? Absolutely. He talked to you like that on a normal basis? Every single day. Take that fucking child and throw it in the fucking dumpster. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand that, though, Lena right? Lena kept the recordings because she thought uh -huh. no one would believe yeah. her. The she played them for the DCF investigators. You need any more? No. Grabbed my neck and, and was choking me and then kicked my feet out from under me. It choking. got worse. And I got worse. Did you ever make like a choking motion? Because she's saying, did your heads ever touch? I do remember just laying in bed, though, in, in the dark, and just like counting the days until the baby would be 18. Sheriff's office. Really quick. Did uh, he ever choke you or constrict your ability to breathe? The final attack was January of 2019. 2019, Carmine was released from jail soon after the attack. DCF scrutinized him and Lena for the next 11 months. They learned that Carmine had been arrested and charged twice for beating and strangling Lena. They found evidence that his ex-wife had also filed a restraining order against him. They learned that police responded to his workplace after an employee said Carmine had threatened him with a crowbar. Still, the child welfare system selected Carmine as the safe parent. A judge awarded him full custody of their four-year-old daughter. I called for help. I wanted out. And I still got punished. It's really shocking to me hearing those recordings where he is saying he was going to break her jaw and, and that he would still get custody. I mean, that is really difficult to mm -hmm. process. How does domestic violence result in a child being taken away from the safe parent? We tend to look at the mother's, it's her children, and so she has to act to protect them. And if she doesn't do exactly what they think she should have done in that scenario, then it can backfire on her, and, uh, and she can be accused of failure to protect. Failure to protect. Under Florida law, if a mother fails to protect her children from witnessing the domestic violence against her, 
she could lose her children. This is where the state lays out why they need to get involved with their children. The mother has continued to expose the children to the ongoing violence and danger of the volatile relationship. And that's why in this document it argues that Lena has failed to protect her children because she maintained a relationship with her abusive husband. What was your house like when you lived with Carmine? I couldn't really get sleep some nights because he was always screaming at my mom. One of the first questions I get is, why doesn't she leave? In 25 years, nobody's ever came up to me and said, why does this guy think he can treat his family this way? And to me, that's the question we need to be asking. Her staying in the relationship is not a crime. Him putting his hands on her, that's a crime. They're kind of, you know, damned if they do and damned if they don't. The call in the law enforcement, the fear is really what that starts. And if you're running a risk of losing your children, that's a really scary place to be. We've heard so many women say they wish they would have never called the police. Yeah. What does that tell you about the system? That it's broken and we need to work on it. Um, anytime the system is set up to prevent people from asking for help, we're in trouble, plain and simple. USA Today published this body camera footage from 2019 as part of an investigation into DCF. It shows what a child removal looks like in practice. DCF came into this mother's life after a boyfriend beat her, strangled her, and left her unconscious. In the agency's view, while she was unconscious, she had left her children unsupervised. Now, the investigator has tracked her two boys to their daycare. She's here to take them to foster homes. DCF eventually returned her children. You're gonna go to hell for this! Calm down, calm down. You're gonna go to hell! Some of the deaths were so bizarre, so cruel, that they made huge headlines and sparked calls. USA Today found that in recent years, child removals for domestic violence in Florida spiked after DCF faced criticism. It's a cycle that works like this. A case of child abuse makes headlines. An outraged public demands action. And in response, DCF removes more children from their homes, both justified and not. In 2014, a Miami Herald investigation found that DCF failed to prevent the deaths of almost 500 children over a period of six years. In response, Florida lawmakers made it easier for DCF to separate children from their parents. We wanted to understand the thinking behind these removals, but no one at DCF would talk to us. So we tracked down a lawyer who used to work for the agency. How many child removals were you doing? There'd be sometimes certain days where you'd have five or six in a day. How many of those removals do you think were absolutely necessary to keep the children safe? That's probably like five to 10% of the cases at most. I hate to say it this way, I know I sound like a monster when I'm saying this. We were doing more to protect our jobs than protect uh, children at times. And there was a lot of, I hate to use the slang word, but CYA. What is that? Uh, basically covering your, covering your ass in situations. You didn't want to make the wrong call and lose your job. This is not right. This is not right. Can we move out that way? This is not right. Anytime something happens with a child in Florida, if, if God forbid a child dies, there's a barrage of blame and, you know, everybody's pointing fingers. So the system's become very liability driven. The USA Today investigation also found that when DCF removed more kids from their parents, 
that created a need for new foster homes. But DCF failed to properly vet the new foster parents. And as a result, the agency delivered some children to foster parents who then physically and sexually abused them. DCF shouldn't be finding out about these things in, in, in the newspaper. January 2021. DCF's top official responded to USA Today's findings at an oversight hearing. A serial pedophile had over 30 of our children in his care. I'm not happy with the quality of the, that work. The quality of the work was poor. If they stop removing children from loving families, they'll open up those beds and those good foster cares for the children that really need it, and those children won't have to go someplace where they're going to be abused. We can't be defined by media stories. There's a lot of, there's a million great things that happen in the system every day. First, we have Lena Marie Hale. Lena also testified. Ms. Hale. I am a victim not only of domestic violence who suffers from severe PTSD and bad women syndrome, but also a victim of the system. Please, Mr. Pobble, help me understand how my abuser retains sole custody of our daughter. Popple resigned the following month. What exactly are you all asking for? We want DCF to have accountability. Society as a whole thinks that you're a bad person, and society needs to be educated. That that's not necessarily the fact. Hi, Beatrice. This is Natasha Del Toro from Fault Lines. Fault Lines requested interviews with DCF officials who could explain how the agency handles domestic violence and whether it's pursuing reforms. Over a period of weeks, the agency declined multiple requests. In a statement, DCF emphasized the consequences that witnessing domestic violence can have for children. It is even more distressing, the statement said, the parents do not, quote, take action to try and stop the cycle of abuse. I still wanted to understand what Lena's case looked like from the inside. So I located the case manager who was in charge of Lena during DCF's investigation. I fail to understand how someone like her could lose custody of her children to the perpetrator of abuse. If they're not together and dad has never hurt the kids physically, then there's no reason to believe that he's going to hurt his, his daughter. I wouldn't say that dad was unsafe as a parent, as a husband, 100%. What do you remember about Lena during that time? What I remember most about her, she was very anxious. I'd be like, it's OK. You know, my job is not to snatch your kids. Like, that's not my end goal here. So I just remember her being very scared and fearful of losing her kids or not being with her children. Were the kids safe with Lena? Yeah. I went through that home myself and did a home study. And not only did I believe that she was, you know, fit to have her children back, but all parties agreed that she was a safe parent. May of 2019 was a turning point in the case. Lena tested positive for cocaine twice, according to DCF records. Having a substance abuse problem, does that automatically mean that you're not a fit parent? Not at all. Not at all. Um, it just depends on, is she trying to parent while impaired? Lena disputed the tests as false positives. Christiana said those denials probably hurt her case. Still, DCF never accused Lena of abusing her children. This was Christmas Day at McDonald's. I got an hour with the two of them. I just never in a million years thought I'd be at McDonald's for an hour with my kids on Christmas. I was surprised that it ended up that way, um, especially when there was a caregiver in the grandparents. We're not seeing a lot of egregious cases of child abuse. What we see are parents who struggle. When they get involved with a family because of domestic violence, they may uncover other issues like substance misuse. Hey, Pooh, what's wrong? But we need to support them in that, helping them get to a better place, leaving them better than we found them, not making it worse. You are always in my heart, Bye. 
There's only been an instance of maybe one or two cases where I thought it was actually like this kid needed to be removed. Um, I think it's widely misused. I, I don't agree with removing so many kids from the home. It just ends up traumatizing them all over again. Lena was one of Christiana's last cases before she resigned in 2019. She said she left the agency because she was doing more harm than good. Where's he at? Where would he go? Less than a year after Carmine's last attack on Lena, a judge granted Carmine custody of their daughter. In the court order, he wrote that Carmine was now safe because he had completed a batterer's intervention program. There was no evidence that Carmine had beaten or strangled anyone else while under DCF supervision. The domestic violence was, quote, remedied. Please leave your message for three, eight, Carmine Lania did not respond to our repeated interview requests. With a program called Fault Lines. I was wondering if you might have some time to talk to me. Where's your sister now? Living with Carmine. When a perpetrator of domestic violence is awarded custody of a child, the message the child gets is what my parent did was OK. And that's, that's not a good message. As horrible as it is for children to witness domestic violence, what is more horrible is that they don't witness the accountability. Buddy, you got your shoes on, right? You got everything you need. Yep. They should not have taken me and my sister away from my mom. And what are your hopes for the future? That I get to live with my sister again. Are you happy now? Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. I used to be a lot when I was younger. Now I'm like 25% happy because I'm not living with my sister and my mom. The average person believes that when the child welfare service comes to a home and removes a child, that that removal was warranted. I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, these are outliers. These aren't outliers. This is the experience of survivors in the child welfare system. DCF closed Lena's case. At this point, Lena sees no clear path to getting her kids back. A judge granted Lena one hour of visitation a week with her daughter. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, she's been limited to video visits. During the visits, Lena says her daughter holds an iPad while Carmine sits just outside the frame. On Mondays, Lena drops off these messages for her daughter at her school. I haven't seen my daughter in about a year, maybe maybe seven, seven, eight times in a year for an hour. One day, if they come and they ask, you know, mommy, why'd you abandon me? I can show them, mommy tried. <laughs> 